Hi everyone. Today I'm going to explain you how to solve problems uh, questions six and seven from tutorial uh, tutorial ten. Okay, so I need to just the view first. Okay, about uh -huh. quite nice. So uh, and these two problems, these two questions are actually about two topics which are closely connected to each other. So the first topic will be analytic functions, analytic functions, functions, how to determine if the given function, a complex variable function is analytic or not. So this will, will be question six. And the next type of problem will be how to find uh, complex variable function f of z if uh, only, if only u or v is given given so this is what uh, the question seven is about so here's uh, our plan for today so let's start let's start uh, discussing uh, complex variable functions or functions of complex variables first so functions functions of complex variables it's like an introduction to these two topics Functions of complex variable, variable, oh, sorry for my handwriting, <laughs> I wrote something messy, really messy here. Okay, so what is this uh, thing called uh, complex variable functions? function? Uh, until now, we've known only complex number. Complex number looked like z is equal to x plus i times y, where y is a imaginary unit, which is the square root of minus 1. And x and y are called um, real. x is a real part of an imaginary number, and y is an imaginary uh, part of the complex number. Sorry, I, did, I said something wrong before. Not imaginary number, but complex number. OK, what about functions? Functions. Functions. There are functions like in every other uh, field of uh, calculus. And there are functions here as well. They are called uh, functions of complex variables bef uh, because their arguments are complex numbers this time. Uh, so, and it turns out that just like numbers, uh, these functions uh, have a um, real part, which can be denoted like function u of two variables x and y. And they also have imaginary part v. So uh, the whole structure of the function could be viewed as, uh, as a number as well. But you know, there's no wonder because uh, the input of the function is complex variable, but the output of the function is complex variable, complex number as well. And any complex number could be given, could be represented in this form. So there's no wonder. So this u called a real part of function f of z and function v is called imaginary part of function f of z. You know what? Uh, quite often functions are denoted by uh, letter W. It's just, you know, much shorter notation just for the cleaning. So I'm going to use both. Sometimes I will say f of z, sometimes, sometimes I will denote it just by u. So, and the question arises, of course, how to find this u and v, how to find this real and imaginary part of com uh, some complex number. Let's take, let's um, do some examples. Example one, example one, what is the trick? So let's imagine that uh, our uh, W or F of Z is equal to Z squared. How can we, uh, how can we find a real and imaginary part of this uh, function? You know, the trick is very simple one. You just uh, should know how to make the very first step. Wherever you see Z, you should substitute this expression x plus y i y and then see what happens then everything will be quite obvious so let's substitute x plus y i instead of z and see of course we immediately tempted to do this um, to apply this formula a plus b squared let's do it so the first term squared plus 2x times i y plus i squared y squared uh-huh and you know too well that the last term is actually minus y squared because i squared i squared is equal to minus one. Therefore, the first and the last term are like terms, and we can put them in front actually. X squared uh, minus minus y squared. And as for the remaining term, 
uh, we can rewrite it as 2xy in front and times i. And you know what? We already have the answer. Look at this. This is obviously the uh, real part, real part of the function. And this is obviously the imaginary part of the function, our function u. So to be more concise, you can always write that w is equal to u plus i times v. It will be as convenient as for the number, even though, of course, you know that the u and v are not just numbers, they are functions of two variables, x and y. So, okay, so uh, the method, the approach is very simple one. Uh, all the functions, variable functions, they always contain variable z. This is the argument of this function, input of this function. And you just plug in this expression. And then after that, you might be required to do some operations over a complex numbers. Let's do one more example. One example. Example two will be uh, f of z. f of z is equal to one divided by z. Mm -hmm. So, and our task is the same: to find u and v, to find a real and imaginary part of this function. And the first, our first move is always plug in this expression x plus y uh, i y instead of z. And now you see that you need to do the division. Uh, number one gets divided by x plus y y. We know the trick. We know to we need to multiply both denominator and denominator by the same expression, which is x minus y. And here x minus y. This expression is called conjugate to this uh, initial expression. And the purpose of this, of doing this, was to get uh, uh, x squared minus uh, i y squared. But the thing is that i squared is minus 1. That is why imaginary unit i disappears from the denominator. And the denominator turns into x squared plus y squared. And I'm just rewriting the denominator. And now all that is left for us to do is just to make this division. x gets divided by the denominator plus i i gets divided by the same expression. x divided by x squared plus y squared plus, or well, maybe I'll pull out i here, looks more beautifully. And that's it. So this is our u, this is the real part of our function, and this is our v, this is our v. So that's it, that's it. Ah, one more example, just in case. Maybe you can be confused with some unusual situation. So let's denote the second, uh, this next function, w. I'm trying to uh, use both notations so that you can get used to them. So what about function e to the power of z? You know the same trick, absolutely the same trick. You start out uh, by applying this trick. You substituting x plus y, y instead of z. But uh, how to go about this expression next? Maybe you uh, recognized uh, Euler's, um, the famous Euler's formula. Let's just recall this formula. e to the power of i phi is equal to cosine of phi plus i times of sine of phi. But unfortunately, we have uh, this, um, apart from i, y, very nice term, very nice expression for applying this formula. We also have this term, r, 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 x, which is sort of in a way. But you know what? We can simplify this expression using very well-known property of the powers. So e to the power of x, e to the power of i, y. That's how it is very written. So I'm rewriting a to the power of x. And as for this expression, I'm applying I'm applying an uh, Euler's formula to it. So it will be cosine of y plus y sine of y. And now I need to do this multiplication, of course. e to the x plus, or not plus, but times cosine of y plus i e to the x and sine y. And of course, you can see very clearly that this term corresponds to u, function u. And this term corresponds to function v. I'm sort of lazy to write u uh, of x and y, v of x and y. You know, you understand this without, without uh, even without this. Okay, so I suggest you should try the next exercise as your homework, as a very ho very little homework. So try to find a real and imaginary part of the function, which is 2i times z cubed. Hmm. You know, to do this task, you will need the formula i a plus b cubed. But I think that I gave you this formula in my previous tutorial. 
tutorial 10, part 1. I remember this quite vividly. And there is the answer here. I can write you the answer just in case. Answer will be so function u is equal to 2y cubed minus 5x squared, x squared y. And function v, imaginary part, is equal to 2x cubed minus 6xy squared. So well, that's it. I think it, uh, this uh, such small um, uh, homework will be enough for you because it's quite an easy topic. Okay, so what next? And now, so this was introduction into the concept of complex variable function. And now it starts for us to plunge into our first topic, first promise topic. Do you remember what it was? It was analytic functions. Analytic functions. Analytic functions. Uh, I'm not going to discuss the uh, definition of what, uh, what, uh, what the analytic function is. Your task is to determine if it's analytic or not. You know. So how can you determine if the function is analytic or not? So uh, the, uh, the problem, the typical problem will be like this. So f of z is given, given to you. And you will be asked, determine, determine if it is if function f of z analytic or not. Analytic or not. A oh, little bit handwriting maybe. I should probably write in capital letters. That's why my handwriting looks more beautiful. It's too late now. Okay, so there is a theorem or criteria uh, or whatever it's called. So this is called the uh, uh, cauchy riemann condition. So let's call it a theorem. Theorem or criteria. Uh, uh, the uh, Cauchy, Cauchy is a very famous French mathematician, as you say, as you know. I don't know about the spelling, maybe it's wrong again. Yeah, maybe oh, Cauchy Riemann. As for Riemann, I'm absolutely sure. The Cauchy Riemann conditions. The theorem calls Cauchy Riemann conditions. So that's how this uh, theorem looks like. So f of z, f of z, which is equal to u plus, plus iv, as we know, is analytic, 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 if and only if uh, the following system of equation uh, is true. y, uh, uh, u prime x is equal to v prime y, and u prime y is equal to minus v prime x. So that's how this theorem goes. So if these conditions uh, are true, uh, are correct for every uh, point on the complex plane x and y, in this case, uh, this function uh, turns out to be analytic. And all you need to do, you need to check these equations. But you know what? As for my notation, I prefer this shorthand notation. Of course, you know that these um, partial derivatives can be denoted in a, um, in a fancier way. So, for example, if you uh, want to rewrite these cauchy riemann conditions, it will look something like this. du over dx is equal to dv over dy. This is the first condition. And the second condition could be written as du over dy. Oh, it's not a good pen. To change pen. Minus dv over dx. But you know, I find this notation quite a long one. It's not necessary in this you know, setting, I think. I think it's better to use this one. So that's how you... Uh, so, um, judging by this theorem, you need to find this u and v for your function as a first step, and then to find derivatives, uh, some partial derivatives, and check that uh, these uh, equalities are true. That's all you need to do. And you know what? Let's write uh, the note here, note in this very page, note. Sometimes you are also asked to find uh, the derivative of the, uh, derivative of the analytic function. It turns out that derivative uh, uh, consists uh, exists only for analytic functions. That is why you need to uh, to explore if it's uh, analytic or not first. But if it turns out the function turns out analytic, it, it means that it's differentiable, and you can find a derivative. And the formula for the derivative is like this: u prime x plus e v prime x. So, so you should uh, just uh, substitute uh, these, exp uh, these expressions for uh, partial derivatives here, that's it. This is going to be your derivative. Of course, you can write this expression in a little bit different way. If you uh, uh, try to use these equations, instead of u prime x, you can use v prime y, of course. 
And instead of V prime X, according to the second equation, you can uh, substitute it by my minus U prime X. But it, uh, Y, sorry. Yeah, but it's not absolutely necessary. I think it's enough to know at least one for, formula for derivative. Okay, so now, and it's all uh, this question, problem uh, six is about. So I think that as an example, we can do something similar to your question one. So it's going to be exercise four, probably. Yeah, exercise four for this tutorial. And in this exercise, we are given function w, let's denote it w this time which is equal to z plus i squared, z plus i squared. And you are asked to do uh, two things in this, um, uh, in this problem. Uh, the first problem, uh, the first assignment is check if function w is analytic. Analytic. Check if function w is analytic. And the second uh, uh, assignment is if, if yes, if it is analytic, then find uh, I don't know, derivative, find its derivative, find derivative just, find derivative, let's write it in the word, ah, very, let's write it, this derivative, find derivative double, uh, double three, double uh, prime, so, so let's do this example, it's just a, exactly a, 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 like a problem, a question of, uh, uh, six sounds in the tutorial sheet, so it's just one of the example, okay, first of all, first of all, we need to find u and v this is going to be our like first step let's call it first step so how can we approach this type oh just like i said before wherever you see z you plug x plus i y here uh -huh. and see what happens next you know of course you can say that you have three terms here a plus b plus c squared but it's better to consider these the last two terms like as a one term let's uh, factor out i from this both it will be much more convenient in terms of calculations so this is our a x is on a in the first term and this is our uh, second term so the first term squared will be this plus 2x times second term and finally the last term squared i squared times this parenthesis squared now we need to make some simplifications okay x squared here i can only move maybe i to the rear so 2x y plus 1 times i and here we have minus 1 instead of y squared and this is why the whole term will look like minus y plus 1 squared and of course now you see that these two terms they don't contain imaginary the unit that is why if you move them together in the, from the front they will form function u for us already u u of x x of course plus 2x y plus 1 times i and this guy in front of y it forms our v so we do have our uh, uh, real and imaginary part of our uh, our function let's write them to the new page because i need more space so i'm, I'm copying uh, my results here so u is equal to x squared minus y plus 1 squared and v is equal to 2x times y plus 1. You can uh, further simplify these expressions, but I think that's it, pretty enough. You know. So this was our first step. We just found u and v. Now we need to check if this functional is equal or not. We need to check these cauchy riemann uh, conditions, so, which look like this. u prime y must be equal to minus v prime x okay but we still don't know if they're equal or not so i'm putting question mark here okay so we can uh, calculate uh, corresponding uh, corresponding derivatives so what is u prime uh, with respect to x we need to imagine that y gets frozen it turns into constant so uh, the derivative for this uh, uh, term will be just zero and you will have to calculate on the derivative of 2x squared which is 2x okay and let's immediately calculate uh, v prime y. It will be very convenient to compare them when they are written in the same row. The time it took some blurry without any obvious reason. Okay, so let's look at v, and we need to take v prime y. Maybe it's a good idea to simplify it a little. 
2xy plus 2x. Maybe for some of you it will be more convenient. Okay, so in this case, uh, on the contrary, you should imagine that x gets frozen. Uh, so this whole uh, term 2x is zero in terms of uh, differentiating with respect to y. So what is the derivative of the first? Uh, the first term, just 2x. And look at this. You can immediately see that they are equal to each other. U prime of x is equal to E prime of A. But it's not enough, of course. Let's calculate U prime Y. What is U prime Y? Mm -hmm. Maybe, again, maybe uh, you find this uh, situation a little bit confusing. In this case, you can just apply this formula A plus B squared. Let's do it. It's not absolutely necessary. If you feel comfortable with um, differentiation uh, operation, uh, then it's okay. But if you're not, you can do some simplifications. Okay, U prime Y. Now X gets frozen, but um, uh, this time we have derivative like minus 2Y from this term and minus 2. Uh -huh, okay. And finally, we need to calculate V prime X. So let's look at V. V prime X. Mm -hmm. Y is frozen. That is why the derivative of the first term will be 2Y. And here we have Y. Uh -huh. And as for the uh, last two derivatives, they should be equal uh, with negative sign in front of the second one. Yeah, that's true. So our conclusion that is our function W is analytic, is analytic because it does satisfy cauchy um, uh, equations or conditions. And now it's time to find the derivative. Derivative f prime of z or maybe double uh, u uh, prime uh, is given by formula, which I gave you in the previous page u prime x plus i times v prime x. Uh, let's substitute our results. So u prime respect to x is here, 2x plus i. And where's our v prime x? Uh, it's here, times 2y plus 2. And that's it. This is our answer to this problem. As you can see, it's quite easy. It just needs maybe a little bit of practice, or maybe even not, uh, not, not much practice. A super easy task, I think. You should be just comfortable with finding uh, partial derivatives. That's it. That's it. So after that, I think we now need to move to the second topic of our tutorial, which is um, about a very interesting problem. Let's imagine that you are faced with the uh, inverse problem. So uh, what, what is the direct problem? So now we were given function f of z or w, and we were finding uh, u and v. We were finding real and imaginary part of this number. But the question arises, is it possible to do it in the uh, opposite direction? What if we are given u or v, uh, one, of, one of these guys? Is it possible to restore the function f of z? So let's call it topic number one, number two. And uh, we should write some title, restoring, restoring, maybe restoring function f of z, restoring function f of z, if only u of, uh, u of x, uh, y, or v of x, y is given, is given. So it's very interesting, is it possible at all? So uh, note that you are not given both of them, u and v, because if you're given both of them, uh, you already have this function f of z. You need to only to substitute. But the interesting thing is that if you are given only one of them, only one term of them, so let me remind you that f of z or w is equal to u plus e to i times v. So you're given only one of these terms, either u or either v. Is it possible to restore the function? It turns out it is possible only in some uh, situations. You need to check special condition. So let me write you uh, some definition first. Definition. Definition first. So let's get back to the functions of two variables. So function, 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 I don't know, f of x, y. It's not about complex in the variable. It's just a function of two variables. Is called, is called, is called harmonic, harmonic, harmonic. If it satisfies the following equation, f uh, prime prime x x plus f prime prime y y is equal to zero. So this is 
the definition of um, harmonic function. Of course, you can always rewrite this equation in a different form. Let, let me do it just for you, just in case. So d squared f dx squared. As you can see, this is quite a uh, fancy notation. That is why I'm trying to avoid it if it's not absolutely necessary. That is why I prefer to use this shorthand notation. But you know what? I have to admit that this is actually more informative. It's much better. Uh, that is why uh, mathematicians prefer uh, to uh, still to use this notation because it's more, much more informative. This could be not very important, not very convenient. Just imagine that if you want to write the derivative of the fifth order, for example, you, you will have to, to write five primes here, prime, 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 five times, and x, 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 uh, five times. And this is obviously much more convenient. In this case, it will be d phi uh, five of, uh, divided by dx to the power of five. Of course, it's more, much more convenient. But in some small cases like this, of course, I prefer to use primes. Okay, so this was definition of harmonic function. And what does it have to do with our situation? With, uh, what does it have to do to our task? You know. Okay, so let me explain to you. So let let, let me uh, just uh, write with uh, some sort of algorithm. Just let's call it algorithm. Very small, just the outline of the algorithm actually, not very concise algorithm. So you're given given u, or maybe v, or maybe v. So you even u or function v find find function f of z or w so how should it be done step one step one check check that your given function u of v check that u is harmonic harmonic this is absolutely necessary only if the function is harmonic uh your function u uh, in the only in this case it's possible to do this task only in this case uh, the solution exists so it's absolutely necessary to uh, to check it what is our step two our step two will be to so we are given a function u now and we know we do we need to find uh, another uh, function v which is imaginary part how can we do that you need to use uh, cauchy riemann conditions again let me write it down u prime x is equal to v prime y and the second equation is u prime y is equal to minus v prime x so it means that we know we know we know v prime x and v prime y from here because you can calculate the left hand side uh, because you know the function u but as this function as this derivative is equal to them so it actually means that we know this function and we want to find and we want to find function v mm -hmm. so look at this task we are given two partial derivatives and want to restore the function itself it's a quite old familiar topic for you we went over this topic you know quite recently i don't know was it tutorial seven or what so it's quite a typical very familiar task for you and you know how to solve it of course i'm gonna uh, refresh your knowledge now i'm gonna give you an example but nevertheless uh, it's quite a good news for you that you already know how to do it okay what is step three well step three is quite obvious you need to uh, write your function let's call it w to be r u plus times v yeah you already had u from the very beginning it was given in your problem and you just found in the previous step your function v so you can substitute them there and you are almost done but you know what it's not quite uh, you know you should uh, make your answer more beautiful because you can imagine that u and v are functions of x this is why you will have letters x and y here instead of z actually so uh, complex variable functions should have uh, argument uh, input z how to how can we uh, find z how can we provide z it means that it turns out that you need to apply the trick special beautiful trick you need to set y is equal to zero and x is equal to z Remember this trick, it's very beautiful. It looks even artificial. Oh, I don't know, red pen, favorite red pen. So just remember, just write down this trick. And after this trick, you immediately, your function will be uh, rewritten uh, in a very beautiful way. Uh, it will be a typical function, W or F of Z, not of X and Y, but F of Z. But you know what? 
And the last step, it's not compulsory. It's just what it's, uh, you know, it's recommended. You need, uh, you can do the checking. How can you check your result, especially on the exam, of course, which is quite soon. So you are given f of z uh, from, from uh, like an answer. You can always find, find again u and v just to check that they are the same, that u is the same which was given in your uh, problem and v was the same that you found. So it's excellent. It's always excellent. It's always a great idea that you have an opportunity to check your result. It doesn't happen in mathematics very often. That is why if you uh, are given uh, this problem in the, in the exam, I think that you, you can, may consider yourself very lucky because you can always check your result. You can always make sure that your a solution is 100% correct. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to apply this algorithm. So let's uh, take some example. This time it will be from our tutorial list. It will be question 7b. So let's take question 7b. So in this question, uh, let's use red. Right so you are given function u, u of x, y, which looks like 3x squared minus 8xy minus 3y squared and reciprocally plus 2y. Mm -hmm. And you asked to find function w or f of z or it doesn't matter how you uh, denote it. So let's, so you have the S algorithm, you have these steps. So let's start applying our algorithm. First of all, we need to check that our given function u uh, is harmonic. Uh, to this end, we'll have to calculate the derivatives of the uh, second derivatives. But uh, this function looks super easy. I don't think it will be very challenging. Okay, let's start with the first derivative. u prime respect to x will be 6x minus uh, 8y and plus 0, plus nothing. Okay, here I'm going to calculate u prime prime xx, which is the second derivative with respect to x again. Oh, it's so blurry. Maybe it's not so terrible, but a little bit annoying. <laughs> okay, so in the second derivative, we need to differentiate this expression again, uh, respect to x. You will have 6. Okay, let's move to u prime y. u prime y will be minus 2x minus 6y plus 2. Mm -hmm. And u prime prime y y will be minus six. Uh -huh. As you can see, the uh, harmonic function is function which uh, uh, satisfies this equation. But you know what? In our case, this is six. This is minus six. So they obviously give us zero in the sum. So this, our conclusion that uh, u is function u of x s is harmonic. Harmonic. And that is why it can play the role of a real part of some complex uh, uh, variable function. So, in other words, uh, the solution exists. And that is why we can take uh, the second step now. The second step was to write down uh, uh, cauchy riemanns uh, conditions. Let's try them once again. So, u prime y is equal to minus v prime x. And now we can substitute our uh, derivatives to the left-hand side. Ah, maybe we can rewrite this uh, uh, first uh, first equation as v prime y is equal to this guy, 6x minus 8y. And as for v prime x is equal to minus this derivative. So we have 2 or 8x plus 6y minus 2. And now we need to find function v of x, y. This is a very old familiar task. I can even put a frame around this task. So you are given two partial derivatives of the function and you want to restore the function itself. Let's just go over these techniques once again. So do you remember how we approach this task? We, uh, we try to Ah, by the way, quite a curious thing. Do you remember that this um, uh, the um, solution to this task uh, doesn't uh, doesn't necessarily exist. You were always uh, required to uh, check that the partial derivative of this respect to x should be equal to partial derivative of this respect to y, which was 
equal like a, a rotation of your vector field is equal to zero. This was a necessary condition for our necessary condition for our existing uh, solution to exist. But in this case, uh, the uh, harmonic, uh, you know, this harmonic equation plays this role. So these uh, two uh, problems are pretty similar to each other. Okay, so let's start doing. So do you remember how we used uh, these two pieces of information in turn? So let's start with the first one. So I see that I've given uh, partial derivative with respect to y from uh, v, how uh, v can be found. It means that I need to integrate this partial derivative with respect to y, of course. So let me substitute uh, v prime y, which is 6x minus 2y dy. And now I need to take under derivative of each um, term. So in this case, uh, it will be 6xy. In this case, uh, the antiderivative of y will be y squared divided by 2, but we can cancel by 2, and it will be minus 4y squared, and plus c, c1 maybe even, c1 of x. Remember this rule. If you just integrate it with respect to y, this uh, variable should be uh, of x. This is what the function of x. Okay, so we used up the first piece of information. How can we use the second piece of information? That the uh, this derivative is equal to this equation. We we can uh, differentiate this function because it's actually almost the answer. So our goal was to find function v, but v is already in front of us, almost, almost, because we're still missing this c one of x. That is why we can rewrite the second piece of information here and plug in our almost found function. So let me. Let me copy this second uh, second uh, condition, uh, Cauchy-Riemann condition. So, v prime of x is equal to 2x plus 6y minus 2. And here, instead of a v, I can uh, plug in my expression from the previous step. 6xy minus 4y squared plus c1 of x. And I'm going to write it like prime of x. So, it looks like we are going to have a nice equation after we differentiate the first uh, uh, left-hand side. So uh, if you want to take the derivative of this term with respect to x, it will be 6y. This will be 0, of course. And plus c1 prime of x equal to 2x plus 6y minus 2. And so you see these two guys, 6y and 6y, get canceled out. And that is why we have an expression for c1 prime of x, which is 2 or, or 8x plus, oh, minus 2, minus 2, sorry, almost a major mistake. And now, how can we find uh, the function itself? This is the derivative of the function. Of course, the answer is very simple. We need to apply reverse operation to differentiation, which is integration again. So I'm integrating, and this is quite an ordinary integral, only one letter, only one variable x here. So. The first term will give us 4x squared. The second will be minus 2x. And then finally, we have plus another constant, c2. But this time, it's a real constant. It's not a function. It's a constant. And what can we do with this uh, expression for c1? We should uh, recall that we already had our function almost found. We need to plug it in here. So let me copy this expression from the uh, red frame. 6xy minus 4y squared. And instead of c1 of x, I can plug in this expression. Plus 4x squared minus 2x plus c2. So it looks like there's no way of um, to simplify this expression. It already looks quite simple. So we are almost done. We did manage to find v. So let me remind you our algorithm. So we are here. We just uh, finished with the step three, uh, uh, two, we find v. And now it's uh, time to move to step three. It's time to write our function. So which is w, u plus i times v. Okay, let's do it. So step number three. Step number three. Our function w is equal to u plus e i times v. And I need to, aha, uh -huh, u was quite a big expression. We need to, we need to copy it here. It looks like this. So u looks like 3x squared minus 2, or minus 8xy minus 3y squared plus 2y. Aha, uh -huh, it's done. And now plus i, and I 
taking um, opening parentheses and writing this V here. So as you can see, quite a big expression. Square plus four x squared minus 2x and plus uh, it's not necessarily to write c2 we can just uh, write c i just did it just you know to make things neat but uh, and now if, uh, the fourth step it's better to apply the trick because we we need uh, the input being z not x and y but z how to uh, take z from here do you remember this nice trick we need to put y is equal to zero and x is equal to z Thanks to this y being equal to zero, many uh, many terms will just disappear. So the first term will be three z squared. Z squared because it's z squared. This is disappears because y is equal to zero. Disappears, disappears. This one a ah, plus i. Let me rewrite it plus i. But inside the parentheses, this disappears, disappears. Aha. Uh -huh. So we are left only with this one z squared minus two z and plus c. So that's it. You can leave this function in this form. You can maybe make this multiplication, but it's not necessary. It looks pretty nice. So this is our answer to this problem. But you know what? As I said before, especially during exams, you know, even even if you feel that you don't have enough time, but I think nevertheless it's a good idea to uh, to do checking. It doesn't. It won't take you long. I'm sure. I'm so sure. So let's make. Uh, let's do checking. How it can be done? We need to pretend that we uh, this uh, function is given to us and we need to find u and v let's try and do it so how do we usually find u and v we plug uh, this expression x plus y uh, uh, x plus i times y instead of z and do some you know calculations very simple ones okay x plus i y squared plus i here the rest of us we have the same x plus you know what maybe it was a good idea uh, it would be a good idea to simplify this function first okay it's too late it's too late i'm going to do it in this form no problem at all okay. and uh, plus c plus c okay that's right so it will be 3x squared here we have plus 6x y times i and here you remember that this uh, squared this term squared will be minus y squared this y minus 3y squared plus i i'm opening parentheses and here i need to do this multiplication as well 4x squared plus 8xy times i here again i have minus y squared that is why minus 4y squared here i will get minus 2x minus 2i i <laughs> y i and plus c mm -hmm. but that's not enough that's not finished yet because i need to do a multiplication by y yet i not y but i okay so i need to rewrite the first three terms as you can see quite a long story but uh, but it's worth it it's actually worth it but because i'm not absolutely sure myself that i have made any careless mistakes i could have easily done careless mistakes so okay let's do multiplication plus 4x squared times i then this term by this term by i will give us minus 2xy minus 4y squared i minus 2xi uh, plus 2i y sorry <laughs> and plus ci oh quite a long story but we are close to the finish look at this so we need to find uh, like terms which are without without i real parts so this is real this is real and that's it so let's move all real uh, terms in the front right minus two eight x y plus two y uh-huh so this guy should give us u our function u let's have a look at the problem oh i even can't find this problem to be honest where is it <laughs> Thank you so much. Ah, yeah, yeah. so here was my u look at this mm -hmm. Let's compare. Is it the same or not? Yeah, it's the same. Look at this. Oh. So it was definitely worth it. So 3 x squared. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. Absolutely the same. I wasn't sure myself. But you know what? We should press on. We should uh, check uh, V as well. So um, uh, as for remaining uh, terms, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms, they all have uh, this uh, factor I in common. So I should be factored out, of course. And now we write the remaining things very carefully. 
plus 4x squared minus 2x and plus c, and I missed one term, minus 4y squared. Uh -huh. a little bit. So this guy should give us v. Uh -huh. Where's y was our v? We found v in the previous step, so let me move it here to the screen. So let's try and compare this. So this was our v, and is it the same here? So the first term is here, the second term is here, yeah, yeah. So now we can be absolutely sure that our solution was 100% correct. So that's it. So that's it for this tutorial.